Hey guys, Michael Corsentino with my latest tutorial for Shutter Magazine behind the shutter.com. If you guys are not yet subscribing to the magazine, do yourself a favor and go and get that taken care of because every month you will get awesome photography tutorials and business information delivered right to your door so that you can take your photography and your photography business to the next level. This month, I wanna take you behind the scenes of a very interesting shoot that I did recently, a uh, portrait shoot. My friend Travis came in. I love to photograph my friends. It's a great way to hone and sharpen your skills and apply those skills to your commercial jobs. Uh, so that's what this shoot was all about. And it gives you a chance to try new techniques and new things in a non-pressurized, non-stress environment. And one of the things that I wanted to try with this shoot uh, was a kind of a blues-inspired shoot, a shoot inspired by work that I've seen done with blues musicians. I work with a lot of musicians in my commercial work. And I had also wanted to really try and squeeze out as much saturation from gels as I can possibly get. And one of the things that I found working with gels, or with strobe, is that it's very easy for the strobe to overpower the gels and wash them out. Um, and I think you'll see here that by using constant light uh, and a combination of strobe and constant light together, I've been able to really maximize the best of both worlds. I'm going to use the constant lights, as you'll see, um, LED uh, daylight fr daylight balanced Fresnels. They're focusable Fresnel lights, um, and they will allow me to get the most punch and saturation out of my gels, while I will use strobe to give me a nice crisp contrasty look and help to freeze the motion a little bit while I'm getting some motion from the constant lights because I have to use a really slow shutter speed, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's take a look. Here are a couple of the finals. This is where we're going to end up. So to get to the final, which you're seeing on the right, where I use strobe and constant light, basically what I like to do when I'm problem solving, and that truly is every shoot, is, is, a, is an exercise of problem solving. Okay, so if you think that you just show up and press a button and everything's great, disabuse yourself of that concept because that really is not the case, at least in my world. Um, I like to noodle and figure things out and, you know, really try and season to taste and come up with the best solution. So on your left, on the left rather, you're seeing the constant light only capture where I'm using the LED Fresnels that I talked about previously for, with gels on them, a blue in the back and a red on the uh, camera right side. Um, and then on the right, you're seeing the strobe and constant light mix where I'm using the strobe as my key light uh, camera right by the red light. It's a uh, camera right in the front. Um, I'm using a Mola Demi uh, silver interior beauty dish to give me a nice contrasty punch, but there's a, only a very, very subtle contribution of light there. But you can see that it does make a difference. It adds a bit of crispness, a bit of white light, uh, and it gives the image a little bit more sizzle and sort of pizzazz, for lack of a better term, in, in my humble estimation. So let's take a look at where I started. Okay, so here's when I introduce the strobe, and you can see that you can see on the um, on the left side. Let me go into my drawing layer here. You can see that we've got a little bit of blue light here. Now the red gel light over here on this side is already you know in full force, but you can't see it because what you can just see a little glint of the red in uh, Travis's eyes, but um, and you really can't make out any of it on his clothing and on his skin tones because what's happening is the key light, which is here, the Mola Demi with the strobe, is washing everything out. Uh, so obviously way too much power. The, the daylight Fresnels, don't, they're 600 watts each, they don't put up enough power to compete with the strobe, and the strobe uh, is putting out too much power and washing out the gels. So not a good mix. So this is what I mean by season to taste and problem solving. Right now I have a problem. I'm not getting the result that I want. And I know that I can you know, that I can get the effect that I want out of both of those lighting instruments, but that I need to tweak my settings and rethink my approach, okay? So when I started this, I was at like F16, um, at 100 ISO, um, at 100, 125th of a second, normal sort of studio settings for working with strobe. Um, and I when I use gels and strobes together um, and no constant lights, those settings make sense. But here I'm seeing that everything's getting washed out. I've got a nice exposure for strobe at f16 everything's metered and working perfectly but i'm losing all the color uh, which is the main 
focus of this shoot. I'm losing all that color as a result. So what I needed to do was change all my settings and rethink. So, so my, that's my starting point. You can see I wanted to show you before and after just so you understand what I, where I was, where I started and where I wanted to end up. So again, starting point with strobe on the left and the final um, on the right. Okay, so you can see a very, very different quality of light and really, I think, much more compelling, much more interesting, and much more emotionally evocative, and that's really where I wanted to go. I wanted lots of color and lots of saturation, and, and that's what I ended up with. So let's talk about how I got there. All right, so first thing, what I like to do when I'm trying to problem solve is really simplify everything, pare everything down. So I shut everything off and I work one light at a time, one lighting, one point of light at a time, one instrument at a time, etc. One element, I should say. So I start with the blue light only, and you can see these captures here, so that I can get a sense of each what each thing is contributing. So I'm looking at how much blue light I have and where it's falling on the subject's face and all of those sorts of things, okay? And then you see, I turn that off and I put the red light on. And you can see that on the next frame. And then the next capture is the red and blue together, which you can see here. But you can see it still, it doesn't have that white light, that contrast, that sizzle, uh, for lack of a better term again, that you get when you introduce the strobe. Now here, you're seeing how little strobe all the way on the right was needed in the strobe only capture in order to get that little extra pop. It's just very, very little, and it really surprised me how little I needed. I tried it with more, and it was too much. It was too heavy handed, and it started to wash things out. So again, just to recap, there's the starting point, and there is the final. So what I did to get there is I, flipped my sweat my settings on uh, around okay i went with uh, i think it was iso 800 so that I have a lot more flexibility for bringing in that constant light. I really wanted to bring in a lot of that constant light. Consequently, when I did that, and I also went down to like, I think it was F5 or 6. So I opened up my lens, which is going to give me a softer effect, uh, which you can see here uh, on the right. It's a little softer, which is not a bad thing. And I went down to a 50th of a second, uh, which was also uh, very different and allowed me to bring in a lot more of the constant light because when you're working with constant light, your shutter speed is going to matter. Uh, unlike when you're just working with strobes in the studio, you know, you set your shutter speed at 1 25th of a second and you forget it. But here, since we're using both independent sources of light, strobe as well as constant light, shutter speed matters. Okay, shutter speed matters with constant light. All right, so, but now I needed to really, really dial down my strobe way, way low because it could easily overpower, especially at 800 watts, at 800 ISO and, you know, F5 uh, at 50th of a second. That's a lot of light that is going to be coming out of that strobe if I have anything above like the lowest setting. So, that's what I did. And the low shutter speed also allowed me to introduce a little bit of motion um, because I'm able to capture that, you know, movement, uh, while the strobe will help me freeze a little bit. Also, you get the best of both worlds. You get a little bit of motion with a slow shutter speed, and then the f flash pop helps you freeze also. So you get a nice sort of, almost like a ghosting kind of image, uh, where you get a little motion, but then you get a nice crisp image underneath it. All right, so let's take a look at the behind the scenes. All right, so now I can do some drawing here. I think I have white in my brush here, but you can see here that we've got our two gel lights. You've got red on the front and um, blue on the back, and these are the Lupo Lux Daylight Fresnels. Uh, they're awesome uh, focusable LED daylight balanced Fresnels. Here is the Mola Demi Beauty Dish, and again, this is a silver interior beauty dish. Here we've got a triflector. This is a Lastolite triflector. Uh, with silver, uh, and it's reflecting light back up underneath and helping to open up here, basically reflecting back from here. And then I brought in a white reflector. You can't really see that, but I'll just make an arrow here um, to put back a little bit of light coming in from here to bounce back a little light, open up the shadowed side of Travis's face. All right, and we have a fog machine here, a Roscoe fog machine, which they did not end up using. Um, and it was gonna, this was initially supposed to be a different shoot, which I'm gonna show you guys next month, where I was also gonna use the fog machine, but I ended up not using it there either. So eventually the fog machine will get some use again. All right, let's take a look at another one. Here's another angle, just to show you a little bit of a different vantage point and 
Also color grading, I wanted to talk about that. Okay, so I wanted to show you this without any of the gel colors, just so you can really see how the color uh, was different once I did the color grading, where it was and where I got. Um, and I work with Capture One Pro, that is the raw processor that I use, um, and I do my color grading in Capture One Pro prior to export uh, for any retouching necessary or, or additional work in Photoshop. Um, I work on the raws, obviously, because that's you know going to give you the best uh, result when you're working with a raw file uh, rather than working with a TIFF or a PSD. So here you can see the before and the after um, and it gives it a really nice kind of editorial shift. And in order to do that, I you typically I work with my own uh, you know mixtures. Uh, just to say, if you, in case you don't know, um, in, fo in, uh, in Capture One we use something called styles and styles are like um, presets in Lightroom. Okay, so if you haven't investigated Capture One, I encourage you to do so. It's a really amazing raw editor and um, the nomenclature for Capture One is styles, but you can think of it like presets. So they have a new set of presets, which I just was checking out um, and I picked it up and it's great. And I used one of the presets from this set, the editorial color grading styles set. And I used one of Pratik, uh, Pratik's presets. You can buy these individually or as a combo set, and I think you save a bunch of money when you do that. And um, if you're a Capture One user, uh, I encourage you to check them out. They're great. Um, and I love the editorial look. That is the comp comprises the bulk of my work, has that kind of look to it. And now I can do that. And of course, you can tweak them and you can save them, you know, uh, as your own and or just use them straight out of the box. All right, and here are the finals all put together. So you can see kind of what the overall result was. Um, so again, uh, let's take a look. Let's see where we started. Go back to this. Here we go. So there's where we started out uh, with just the strobe um, and the uh, gels being washed out and the final once I kind of rechanged, changed up my settings, lowered the strobe uh, to its lowest setting possible just for a little kiss of light um, and used a slower shutter speed and opened up my aperture and changed my ISO to 800 and that those, that combination of things really allowed me to maximize the saturation from the strobes um, and while getting, you know, a, a nice bit of contrast and pop from the, um, uh, from the strobe, right? Uh, so, you know, kind of the best of both worlds. So if I, I don't know if I said that wrong, if I said uh, to, to maximize the color from the LEDs, from the LED lights, from the strobe, from the gels on the LEDs, and then to get the contrast and the pop from the strobe. Again, just that tiny little contribution of light. So that's it. Let's turn that back off and go back to our overview. I hope you guys have enjoyed that and uh, that it gets you excited about working with constant lights and strobes together and throwing in some gels. Colors are really fun to work with. Um, and when you get them to do what you want, uh, it can be really exciting. So that's going to wrap it up for this month. I look forward to seeing you guys next month here at BehindTheShutter.com.